down just while you touch or just cruise, for example, they're going to have a pretty easy time of it. So uh, on the side of Dignitas, just to reintroduce everybody, we haven't actually streamed them yet on this channel. So uh, Watt7 is going to be filling in that Reinhardt role for Dignitas, Evoki on the... Uh, Lucio Toxican playing a variety of characters. Soldier seems to be the character of choice right now. Bromas on McCree. It's been a long time since I've seen Bromas McCree, so happy to see that. Linkser starting out on the Genji and Vainless on Anna. So uh, I know that uh, every single one of these guys on Dignitas has been playing for basically like a year and a half or more. Uh, they're very seasoned players. It's just a matter of how are they going to play together. I think Wat7 and Evokia are the two more, more recent additions to Dignitas. And X Reunited, I mean, we've seen them play a number of times today. And it's basically just come down to can Valutaja continue to be an annoyance? How well can he keep himself alive? Uh, the Immortal Tracer just dealing tons of damage. And Cruz's uh, ultimates generally seem to get the job done every single time with that Dragon Blade. So, uh, again, just play defensive minded play knowing that Valutaja and Cruz are going to be on your healers at all times and uh, just deal with it the best you can yeah and right now they might be using a slightly different team composition although if more take goes back it looks like they're running the good old faithful composition right now let's jump on with our man unfix on the soldier right now they're pushing this oddly very quickly they want to make sure that they can get that free push into that car wash stage underneath and they're going to attack this high ground currently unfix is basically just trying to make sure that he can attack from range he knows the composition the other team he's trying to figure out the composition the other team is running Dignitas is running a very similar lineup. They're running that single tank composition. The only difference that they're doing is that they're not having the Tracer. Instead, they have Bromas on the McCree. Hopefully, maybe trying to deal with a lot of their flankers. And of course, Links are trying to take down Unfix. And Unfix is dueling himself as well. But Bromas takes down Voltage in the background. So that's actually huge. That's exactly what he was meant to do. That flashback needs to make sure that he's able to take him out. And now Bromas is playing on the aggressive without that pesky annoyance in the background. He's able to push as hard as he can, knowing that his team will not be punished. And once he's able to detect the threat and deter them, he's able to run back. And now they have the range advantage and they will be able to use it. This is like a very long non-fight, basically, where only Valutaja died and then everything else just backed off. Unfix got chased away by Lynx. Uh, at this point, Bromas is going to be the first one down, so the attackers actually have the advantage. Morte gets the kill on Lynx. Genji, Vainless goes down as well, and Extra United are just stomping through now. 6v3 should not be too much longer uh, before they finish off the rest there. And yeah, Dash resets alone there for Cruz, dishing out a ton of damage. Watt7 falls. And now the hangar phase is already off to a kind of a tricky start here. You got two super long spawns for Dignitas while uh, the entire attacking team is already in here. Vainless has nowhere to go. Bromas on the immobile McCree gets shut down as well. And that's like a free first half of the hangar phase where Extra United can just push the cart all the way up to the bridge area and have high ground control if they want it. Yeah, guys, I'll change the overlay once I have it break in the action. But right now, Linkster does have that Dragon Blade, which they can potentially be using. And in the meantime, he has accumulated a lot of ultimates on the Dignitas side. They're backing off right now. They're trying to basically contest it. For some reason, Unfix is on the very top. He's going to get cleaned up immediately by Linkster. And Linkster drops down, able to get two swift kills, followed by a third. And he's able to clean this up almost immediately. He doesn't even need the Dragon Blade for Hopeless Last Kill. Sees where Shark is and able to take him down. And Voltaja, not long for this world. Linkster. That's pretty clean from Genji, and he's able to deter the effort. Yeah, Lynx alone uh, getting a bunch of kills there, providing a nice stop here in the shuttle room. And they actually did not get nearly as much mileage off of that as they thought they might. Getting the quick kills on Vainless and Bromas didn't really pay off the same way as uh, they would expect. So Valutaja and uh, Cruz already just diving in here with the Winston Sherrick uh, on top of the shuttle, trying to dislodge them. But honestly, the cart can move quite a ways while they're all up there. Bromas launches his uh, Deadeye ultimate, but doesn't really have many things to look at. Gets the kill on Morte, just standing right on top of him. There's a defensive sound barrier here from Dignitas as well, just to keep uh, Valutaja from getting any extra kills. They should be able to stabilize here. Toxican's a bit out of place, but he gets the kill on Cruz. He was in a bit of danger, but uh, taking up that Genji basically puts him right back into firm footing. Dignitas doing a great job here in the shuttle room so far. Yeah, and this is where the kind of the team composition of Reunited runs into a little more problems, right? Because when you're dealing with other damage dealers, if the side of you know, Dignitas can manage to stop you guys using their triple DPS composition, it's very hard to get used to flanking, right? They have almost as much damage as you do, and Linkser is a very, very strong Genji player, so Cruz can't even use that to his advantage. He can't outskill him by skill alone. Sharif goes into the back, and yes, that, that big 
Dragon Blade gets used by Linkster. We saw 3k, 4k last time. He's doing it. Cruz actually takes him out out of the fight. Now, what is going to be the big one? But Walk does get Mance taken down. That Pulse Bomb does so much damage. Volataja being able to push out with this Evoke. Just trying to sustain this rest of this fight. Trying to keep everyone healed up. But looks at the side of X Reunited doing so much. And the Cruz saying that, hey, you didn't get to use your Dragon Blade. I'm going to use mine instead. Gets that triple kill. Taking out Toxin and Evoke, and now he will be pushing out to this point. We're on to the next stage, and Bromas tries to get as much damage as he can, gets taken out almost immediately thanks to a combination of Sharik and Cruz. And Cruz is just going insane. Linkster is trying to stay alive, but gets meleeed to death instead. And this entire first third phase of this map is just going straight to X Reunited. Well, the common uh, place for the shuttle to actually reach the actual cart uh, usually gets up to that first corner anyway. It's just really hard to defend on the low ground. So the casualties, you know, feeding ultimate to your opponents is never good. But uh, in the end, the timing works out where they're still going to be able to defend generally in the same place. So Dignitas still able to hang on a little bit here. Earthshatter comes out and catches two healers, Rubicon and Morte, both are laying flat and both get taken out there by Bromos and Toxican. Now the damage dealers of Extra United are in the back line. The Pulse Bomb goes out but doesn't find the sticky. He's looking for attack visors open. I mean, they're using ults they didn't need to here. Toxican and Evoke, he both launching, launching the sound barrier and Nano visor at that really unnecessary after killing both supports at the beginning of that last fight. That was kind of awkward. Yeah, burning those actually is not great for their ultimate rotation either. They do not actually have a lot of great offensive ultimates besides Bromas's dead eye. And beyond that, that's probably gonna be very easy to hide behind, you know, like a, like a Winston Shield or get out, out of sight. Volataja though with crew is taking down Baneless, and now this is gonna get very vicious as Volataja just goes deep into the back line. Now Volataja will be looking for the next threat. He does see Bromas. Bromas is very low right now, misses the flashbang. Bromas is jumping down, and Volataja really wants to go for it. He can win this fight single-handed by taking him down. Bromas will stay alive, and we're gonna move away from it right now now as Toxicate will now try to fight Sharik 1v1. Voltage takes down Bromas finally. I keep on switching away from him because I think the fight's over for him, but <laughs> never mind. He's able to do this and X Reunited just winning this fight. DMing alone. Voltage is somehow being able to be such a nuisance in the back of making it so hard and Toxicans can't even get out of his own base. And it's more than enough Cruise with that Dragon Blade. will be looking to slice everyone down. Watt has been discord. Not able to do much besides it. Evoke J unable to stay alive for much more. Vainless goes down with the melee and Reunited cleans it up very quickly in 1 minute 59 seconds. Yeah, Valley Taja uh, stayed there dueling Bromas for a long time, eventually flipped the Pulse Bomb out and hit Bromas mid-roll and got the kill there. But uh, the interesting thing is really just Valutaja staying alive so well against multiple targets. Like he was right up in the spawn doorway and Bromas was not alone. It wasn't really a 1v1. Valutaja still came out on top until he ate a Biota Grenade, ended up dying, but a couple of ults from his team. I think it was a Dragon Blade and a Primal Rage. Finally got the job done. Cart secured with two full minutes left for extra rounds. Now. Uh, Dignitas, I'm not really sure what to make of the defense because it was a bit uh, pulled apart, really. Lynx, I uh, saw a few good kills from him, but then other times he would just uh, get caught on his own and taken out very quickly. Toxican seemed to be out of position on Soldier a couple of times. Uh, Watt7 mostly was seeming to have a, a lot of difficulty just spinning in circles around Valutaja and keeping his supports shielded. So uh, I think X United, I don't know if Dignitas quite reacted to what we knew extra united was going to be running well enough um just based on positioning errors and things like that the shuttle room i can forgive them because they did get a weird split spawn but that's actually where they performed um the best over the course of this map so uh, we'll see on offense they're going to switch it up a little bit if Lynx does go widow he is quite formidable on the Widowmaker. definitely can hit some uh, quick shots to start dignitas rolling well but who knows if he's actually going to stay on that genji of course is equally likely for Lynx. Yeah, and this is going to be, you know, an interesting way to see if they make any adjustments to this composition. We do see the side of, you know, Dignitas changing it up slightly, right? Toxican on the Reinhardt, Watt 7 on the the Winston. Lynx are, oh man, Toxican does switch back and they're going for that single tank composition again. But I'm seeing something that we haven't seen in a long time. Lynx are on the Widow. This is going to be huge. Yeah, and immediately gets Sherrick down to half health. He has to bounce out of there and, you know command the attention of his supports they are going to let the cart roll through the car wash area typically anyway so uh nothing really 
uh, earned nor given away on this first point. Uh, Linkser now does have some angles, really no one to shoot at, so he can at least call out that they are playing up far back. Uh, you can expect them on the high ground there, and the payload has now gotten to basically where the, the freebie meets its limit, right? So Sherek going to jump immediately onto Lynx. Lynx, you know, ropes away, looks for the kill on Valutaja, but he's got nothing to shoot at. This uh, is a slippery bunch of characters he's trying to snipe. Yeah, and he's looking for underneath the payload as well to get grab some angles that which no one can even see at all so he's being able to stay alive which is pretty good so far however the other team knows exactly where they need to go and Cruz takes him down almost immediately they know that that's exactly what the big limit they need to exit out widow is a good pick if you can get into a position where you can execute properly however the big thing that's gone on so far in the background is the fact that toxicin is actually going off the side of dignitas has been using linkser almost as a distraction everyone was so distracted by him they actually committed three dps dealers to go cycle on behind him to get behind him and in the meantime the rest of the team was just being able to be overwhelmed and this is kind of the weak part about this X reunited you know, composition or single tank in general is the fact that if you dedicate all your DPSs to take one person down if anyone that's left on your team gets caught it's very easy for the opponents to push in and take this high ground on this next point and it looks like they're in a tough position right now X reunited needs to find a way to bring it back in the shuttle position uh, this is where Dignitas made kind of their first stand last time, so it still could happen here. This is where fights also tend to kind of break down a little bit. Vainless gets caught way far away from where Rubicon just died, for example. So um, things are splitting up a little bit. The fact that Morte is now down makes this a 4v4 fight with Toxicam dead as well. But the payload is moving. Valitaja and Cruz finally getting up there to try to contest. But Valitaja falls to Bromas' Tracer off of the McCree from the last round, actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on the Tracer is kind of interesting. Nano Boost did get used, unfixed, actually launched his Soldier Ultimate and didn't get the kills he was looking for. He's actually surrounded now by a Lynx Widow and a Bromas Tracer. The cart itself continues to move. It's getting ever closer here to the B checkpoint, but Sharik back in the fight now. Oh, unexpected Zenyatta ult actually keeping everybody in high health. Winston still leaping into the back line, trying to find the switch he's there. Dignitas not allowing X Reunited to pull them apart too much. However, Bromas does go down, and X Reunited finally does get the numbers advantage on their side. Yeah, and right now the side of X United able to stabilize yet again. Voltage are playing very aggressive, trying to punish any people who are trying to straggle in and use it to their advantage. Linkster has switched off of the widow onto the onto the Genji, so we should expect much more flanker battles. Voltage are just trying to get some ultimate charge. Remember, he is at 94%. We've seen a lot of really strong pulse bombs here, and it can be essentially useful if you can take down a big threat like the Reinhardt, or even just a squishy one. He is there. He sticks him almost entirely. He probably takes him down to very low HP. However, it does not seem that they'll be able to capitalize that on that per se. Voltage in the background. Does see the balance from behind. That's one support down completely. And now Cruz and Voltage in the background creating a lot of issues. And Sharik goes in to join them as well. Linkser is very low. Will soon fall. Bromas is alive on the Tracer but will not be alive for very long. Especially with three people chasing him down. Reunited has managed to stabilize again. And more importantly, they're doing this without even controlling shuttle per se. They're just trying to engage and win this 1v1 fights. Yeah, there's still solo tank. Lynx is still struggling to actually get the kills. Like, he'll survive and survive, and then as soon as he goes in, they just turn on him and get the kill. Sherrick has been doing a good job um, protecting his backline from Lynx up to this point. But uh, Bromos also, it seems like he just gets turned on, and he looks rocketed, and he's done for the day. So uh, they really need to keep their DPS alive a little bit better, if possible. Valutaja already taken some shots there at Watt7, who is now off of the Reinhardt onto Winston. Did not work out for him very well in this uh, initial push. Lynx getting quite low on the Genji already. Value Taja gets super low, but just you know, recalls to get back to full HP. There's a Nano Visor up on the high ground, unfixed, just raining down here. Does get the kill on Bromos, so X Reunited having a really, really good shuttle phase, uh, despite what looks very dangerous at the beginning. Yeah, and this is where it's going to start getting a lot worse. We just saw Toxic can kind of like whiff a little bit on that on that no, tactical visor. Didn't really have any big threats because everyone was in a good position. Linkser will be going down almost immediately. Unfixed, still unchallenged on the top of this shuttle. He's just having free reign because the only people that can deal with him right now are in fact Linkser and maybe Toxic on the side. But as long as he put plays the correct angles and allows Voltage to go in the background to do as do exactly what he's doing and be like you know kind of a distraction play, he should be relatively safe. No person wants to target the soldier if you have you know, like a Genji, you have a tracer right in your face. Cruz does have that net that sorry that that dragon blade and that will be the big one to distract for a lot of teams and teams are diving in. Cruz has that dragon blade up. He does say Linkser use it and now Linkser does have that sound barrier in order to use it. Cruz 
Creeping around the back. He knows that he has this great opportunity to keep it alive. Doesn't even need to use it. Will take down Bayless almost himself. Cruz hiding away. Trying to see what we can do against Watt 7. Watt 7 still relatively low. And Cruz needs to find a way to do anything. He's actually going to hold on to the thing as Dragon Blade. He's not going to use it. He's going to go down to Linkser. Oh. Linkser and the side of... You know, Dignitas able to advance the car. Unfix still alive, though, but I don't think they'll be able to contest the payload. Actually, they do. Sharik gets onto the point, allowing everyone else to funnel slowly onto point. Voltage up to 91% right now, which is going to be huge. They do see, you know, one of the bigger ults in it, and Cruz drops the Dragon Blade funnel with that great sound barrier, and now will be in the background. Slashes down Baneless, and Evoke J so low right now on the Lucio. Will be going down. Nice auto slices right through Linkster, and Cruz showing who is the best Genji on the server. Digs down Pro Moss again and another great team wipe on the side of reunited that was actually kind of crazy the reason that that fight went so well is that at the beginning of it what seven uh, got super low health from fighting that genji on the side of the car but he never got healed back up so one stray helix rocket from unfixed as he entered the uh shuttle room caught winston as his bubble was going down so he just had a dead winston under a bubble and right as the enemy Winston came in to contest. So they lost him at a terrible time. There's a nano visor just shredding everything. Four kills there for fix in overtime. Because Big Toss is not going to get out of here. And extra United are going to take a game number one here on Gibraltar. Yeah, and that's got to suck. When you're toxicing, you pop your, you pop your, you know, your, your tactical visor. But Unfix just does it so much better than you do. Getting four kills, I think, at the end of all that. That's so intense right there. But they were able to hold them without even getting to the second point. Extra United up one game to zero in this semi-final tournament who goes straight to the grand finals to face gamers origin they take it here on gibraltar if you're dignitas where do you take them next and more importantly what do you take away from this match we saw dignitas run a very similar composition do you stick with that composition i i just think links didn't get enough done on attack um defense could have obviously gone a little bit better as well but I don't know if the composition is, is really what it is. They're just getting out fragged. And um, I mean, these are the characters that they play the most. So I really can't say changing the composition really matters too much. They're playing very similar characters overall. Like Bromas was on Tracer for the bulk of that game, still could not get it you know, done against Valutaja. So I guess actually, if you're, if you're trying to match them on characters and still not winning, then a composition change has to be the answer. So um, I guess Lijong Tower, I think, and Dorado were our other two maps in the pool. So uh, vastly different maps to where uh, Dignitas might be taking us. Yeah, we'll definitely see where we're going. We'll definitely see where Dorado. we're going from here. It looks like we're going to Dorado next. Let's change up these so people don't confuse who's playing who. Uh, that game goes to X Reunited. We'll change the overlay for us as we get ready to get into the game. Yeah. Hopefully uh, there's no downtime here. We've had some pretty long series actually today. It's gone to three games for uh, our round of eight match and our first semifinal. We'll see if Dignitas can battle back and make it a third match in a row. But uh, Lijong Tower will be the third and final map. If we get there, Dorado doesn't really have any tie potential here. So every meter matters. Super important here for X Reunited uh, to try and maintain their dominance here if they want to head into the finals. Dignitas really need to just um, have a stronger showing. I think they, they were on one tank that whole time. I'm really curious what Azaria or a Roadhog might have been able to do to help them out as far as uh, just the, the rate that they they were dying and there's a lot of burst damage on both sides when you've got soldier genji and tracer you know one pulse bomb one big deflect one helix rocket can end up doing a ton of damage and when your only healers are lucio and zenyatta you've only got heal over time uh, you're gonna get bursted down pretty quick almost no matter what they, they weren't running an anna uh, Vainless, i know is totally capable of playing anna so i um, curious if we're gonna see any major switches Pharah mercy being locked in early here i would like to see it i just don't think the mercy is even really necessary if you've got Farah doing his job correctly yeah and this is going to be really interesting and morte locks out of spawn and this is such a weird oh, man I, I don't even know what to say for this composition if if this is the composition they walk out of spawn with and they just proceed over here it's going to change everything i ever knew about the game 
It's all different, man. More, never mind. It's the same thing. It's in, no, no <laughs> change. No change in the meta. Morte not gonna run the Symmetra. Will be sticking with the Lucio. Very similar composition as you saw before. Uh, they did this exact same change. They're not running the Winston. They're doing a slight variation on defense where they're running the Reinhardt. It's so much easier to have a Reinhardt at this specific point because it's hard for them to push through um, and it allows you know to prevent from like linear access for there. So we're actually gonna jump on right now with. Toxican, who's playing the Pharah, and he does get that Mercy, Pocket Mercy, and this is gonna be so important on their side to make sure that they're able to use the air dominance. He's just trying to pick up targets right now, does accidentally hit Volataja, not on purpose, but does see him, and will be trying to get some cheeky damage in on the side, and he's gonna get boosted as well, damage boosted by that Mercy. So he does see everyone in the back line, and this is the main problem with only having one tank, though. You need to make sure your Reinhardt stays good and healthy. That shield health is very important to deflect any rockets or to defend from any rockets there. Uh, so far, the cart has basically just gotten up to the freebie spot. You've got Farah Mercy in the back, um, actually taking shots at Ana, and Rubicon actually goes down 3v1 there. Bromos uh, doing a good job staying alive against Unfix, but uh, Watt7 just left on his lonesome to try to push the cart, gets totally destroyed. Evoki goes down as well. Farah Mercy, Bromos all here in the background, still trying to get some kills. Lynx is there with them, so the bulk of the team uh, still just kind of swarming around Sharik and Cruz both going down there means the cart is free to push so it was kind of a long bloody fight over the course of like a minute and a half but in the end Dignitas do end up with the majority of the kills the the trick is that there's a lot of extra united here already back to try to contest at the checkpoint itself yeah, I don't know how Volataja does this, but gets a kill straight on Linkser with that pulse bomb. I mean, he's failed to sustain this fight for so long. Watt7, no way out of here. And Bromos right now trying to challenge Volataja 1v1. He needs to fight this. This Tracer Tracer battle is actually one of the most important dynamics in this game right now, especially with so many dive characters. Voltaja, in a way, saves that point. That looked like it was so close, especially with the advantage that the side of Dignitas got so early on in the game. It seemed as though they'd be able to push this first point, no problem. However, Voltaja able to stabilize, and right now they are going to hit that very important ultimate rotation. They are going to get the tactical visor, and Cruz is just 10% off from having that Dragon Blade. This is going to be very impactful. That Nano Blade is going to be very influential, and especially they do have that tactical visor option as well. And now this side of of Dignitas is going to run in. Linkser does use the ultimate, tries to pick up as midfield as possible. That is going to be a 4k for Linkser, but he's going to see if he can pick up any big threats. Voltage is still alive, and he's been a, such a big threat in the background. He looks like he's trying to zip around, trying to stay alive in the process. Bromos, it's like a 3v1 right now, and they finally managed to take him down, and I think they are going to be able to push it to the end of the first map. Four minutes left going to the second street phase. Yeah, they do have actually a very aerial composition as well. You can see Lynx are actually going and biting off a little bit more than he could chew. He kind of got dominated there right in the front line of the high ground. But as the cart continues to push here, I do expect Dignitas has to back off a little bit. Fair Mercy still flying way above. And the fact that Farrah can fly higher than ever um, allows Mercy to basically just stay with him on top of the courthouse indefinitely. Valutaja already looped around to the back, trying to take some shots at Toxican's rear. But uh, the cart itself has moved to a pretty comfortable spot for the defense to jump down. Cruz has his nano blade out and swinging two kills already. Lynx and Evoki dead means this fight is dead in the water. The rest of them might just might as well flop over, but Baneless actually chooses this point to hit the res and the sound barrier follow-up. Toxican drops a barrage and Dignitas end up flipping this fight on its head through the use of three ultimates, take a totally lost fight and save themselves some time to get past the courtyard here. Yeah, and this is the big one, good res, and this is exactly why you want Mercy, right? You know that if Cruz is going to basically execute a lot of ultimates, that Nano Blade is going to cost you two ultimates. If you can counter that immediately with one ultimate, followed by a very good sound barrier drop by Evoche to make sure everyone stays alive afterwards, that's very strong. Watch 7 is going into the back line, takes down Rubicon, that's one healer left, unfixed on the Diva, not actually able to do much, and they're just going to knock them away from the cart, and this is big. Watt 7 looking for his next victim on this aspect. He's just basically making sure they can't proceed whatsoever. Voltage is gonna try to stay alive, unable to do much with that pulse bomb, and the side of Dignitas just escorting this cart. This is a very, very, like, honestly convincing time, even though there's so many ultimate used. 
unfixed, has swapped over to Diva at some point, so he is going to be able to help contest this cart a little bit. Morte with the sound barrier only catches about half of his team, interestingly, but uh, Dragonblade is out now for Lynx. If he can get the same value that he got last time, this will be an easy fight. Valutaja uh, just barely avoiding that second slice. Cruz had his Dragonblade out as well and got a couple of kills, but he's actually going to eat the dust along with Valutaja, so it should be a Dignitas capture in the end after they get rid of Sharik. He had his Primal Rage going, so he lasted a little longer than usual. And right now, Evoke needs to get out of there, let his teammates deal with this damage, and not himself. Sharik's still extremely low. They just still have not been able to finish him off, and wow, uh, Watt7 actually dies before him, so Re X Reunited uh, already catching back up to the cart and contesting. Here come a new round of ultimates, another sound barrier, and a attack visor here from Toxic and will get the job done. Finally, 90 seconds left on that stretch. Another 90 added gives them three minutes here for the final garage phase of Dorado. Yeah, and the aggression kind of has been almost unmatched by the side Dignitas. They're just taking all these spikes and they're winning more importantly. They're using the ultimates to a better advantage. Bromos still staying alive, able to eliminate Sh a Sharaki, um, and basically un unfixed and Lynx are able to get that trade off. So basically unfixed, able to stabilize just a little more, but Toxic is still in the background, creating a lot of issues for them. They're leaving Rubicon alone. Rubicon's just been getting picked up all game recently. Kuz trying to do as much as he can, but in the background right now, there's only so much they can do. Volataja does get the kill, but trades his life for it instead. And Cruz at 27 HP needs to make it away to a healer somehow to stay alive. And Watch 7 pops that Primal Rage, and that Dragon Blade is still available in the background. Toxic is trying to still, still stay alive. Unfortunately, that Reflect isn't going to do much. Lynxer does get the punish on that and now he has a dragon blade able to push through this next level if he can take down morte that's one heal they will not have for this final defense for it and looks as i have reunited will be grouping up in their base for this next a big push and i'm going to stick on my man cruz right now who will have the big big tools he will have that nano blade soon available and he needs to use it right now he needs to get as many kills as he can possible token goes down toxin goes down in uh, and it looks like links will be going now watch seven gets dropped as well and now he's trying to seek out baneless on the on baneless will drop and looks like the side of x reunited able to use this ultimate combination to secure or stop the momentum and re-secure the cart bromos Trying to fight this out, and a Bromos gets taken down. Yes, they will. Voltaja does manage to finish off the weak target. Cruz at 46 HP, but that's a really great nano play. That's exactly what I'm going to do to stop momentum. X United getting a nice stop in there a minute and 45 seconds after they got in. So uh, it was kind of a long, bloody fight. Dignitas still got a lot of value off of it with only one minute left. This is kind of their one and done opportunity. Toxic and getting the kill on Unfix is a great way to swing the door wide open. Lynx is going to dash in as well. Vitasha Pulse Bob takes out both supports, though. Dignitas going to be reeling from that one. They may want to consider just suiciding right now uh, to guarantee that they get one more chance. And as the uh, cards start to fall there. Toxic ain't gonna be the last one dead. Uh, they were gonna die anyway, so <laughs> that was a very brutal start there. Valutaja MVP play there for X Reunited. It forces them down to only one push left, and Valutaja is already running point trying to give them a slower entry. Yeah, and right now Voltaja being the annoyance that he is, actually grabs that large health pack, meaning that they won't have that for a little bit. Voltaja needs to stay alive, does recall, and he's going to be recalled in a very weird position. Toxic can try his best to do as much as he wants, but meanwhile, we're going to stick on to Unfix right now, who does have the tactical visor, gets taken down by... This is just going so bad for Side Reunited. Everyone's just dying. That's so such a great tactical visor taking down two extremely big threats. Voltaja cannot do this 1v3, 1v4, try and stay alive as much as he can. Evoke Jet does get the poop and will kill them. And now the side of X Reunited needs to get onto the point as soon as possible. There's not a lot of options. Morte will be able to drop the beat, allow them to get onto the point and unfix. Meanwhile, in the background, trying to get his tactical visors to do as much as he can, but he's just firing into a primal rage, and that's not exactly what you want most of your damage to be going. Voltaja, meanwhile, staying alive behind the point no one's really noticing him just yet he does get the nano boost because he's been so strong with it watch seven will go down evoke jay trying to try escape the scanning power of this tracer the tracer's just scanning everyone now links are trying to stay as much we'll have as much as he can can't do it reunite actually stops entire the full map push stopping them right before the third point Great stop there for Extra United to finish things off. It was again Valutaja getting a kill very early in that fight to allow Extra United to basically just stream back onto the payload and keep it nice and protected. It's uh, Dignitas's, you know, uh, I, I think it's their weakness basically is 
winning a big fight and then being unable to actually stay on the cart afterwards. Like they immediately start dashing forward and things like that, which, you know, can be, of course, very powerful if you're able to actually stop them from getting back to the cart. But it seemed like it happened multiple times where they would win a fight and somehow still end up losing in the long run without getting the uh, cart distance that they're looking for. So maybe it's just a little bit uh, too on edge. They're just always trying to move forward and can't actually protect the objective in the way that they want to but x reunited uh doing a good job every time of just uh being mindful of where the card is valutaja of course uh being able to dart around as tracer basically having the trust of valutaja that he's going to keep himself alive gives x reunited a lot of wiggle room for the healers to keep everyone else up uh sharik on the soul tank uh but winston has just been doing a great job staying alive as long as he possibly can that point b area uh, hold where he should have died 2v1 ended up staying alive the entire time long enough for his team to get back so uh, x United just pulling out some very really, very strong individual plays that we're not I quite seeing out of Dignitas but they have a chance to defend here and uh, potentially put a stop to this x United um, payload powerhouse I guess <laughs> Yeah, and this is going to be some interesting, interesting ways that we're going to go on to offense. I wonder if Unfixed will be sticking onto the Pharah. They're running this very, very dynamic DPS composition, but I want to know if he will be staying on it. Unfixed will be staying on this Pharah, and we've seen exactly how much damage he's been able to do in the past. So this is going to be very interesting to see how far he's able to go with this. As the doors open, you've got uh, Tracer, Valutaja, working around to the far side already. Usually this payload, again, is given just a lot of mileage all the way up to that first choke point uh, because you don't want to lose a fight there on defense before that choke point. Then you're just kind of screwed, and the offense spawn is really close by. So uh, they go ahead and get through the S-curve there into the choke point. Unfixed finds the first kill on Toxican, so that is a brilliant start for them. Yeah, and right now he's getting a lot of direct rockets. He's no one being able to deal with it, especially because he dealt with the one DPS here that was kind of a sign to maybe make sure the Pharah is, you know, dead. He is looking for the support, so he's trying to get see if he can get any squishy damage. Watch 7 just standing out from being so divided from the rest of the team because of the rockets. They need to put distance around for him. Linkster pulls him out of the sky, which is going to be huge for him, denying the aerial presence, so he's going to be able to hopefully move forward with Rubicon still sleeping on the ground. He can't sleep on duty here, but it doesn't matter. Cruz will be able to use it to his advantage. Voltage does get taken down in the process not but not before getting a kill linkser will miss the hook and cruz is just punching he's uh, diving all over the place no one really knows where he is toxic is not even turning around to do damage to him but cruz if cruz can get a big damage they will get flashbang by broma somehow managed to still stay alive with 74 hp and now he's just zipping around the cart this is where it starts getting tough when you lose most of your tank threats however the side digging toss will be able to regroup and that in my sights that tactical advisor gets executed toxic and able to mow them down and this is just where Dignitas able to regroup a lot better. Reunited needs to back off and regroup, find out where their solutions are, gather their ultimates. They did not burn as much as they did. However, they do have to worry about Linkser as Linkser has been hitting so many hooks and takes out Volataja so late into the round. Yeah, this uh, fight has been going a lot better for Dignitas. I think potentially just because Lynx has swapped over to the Roadhog, they have a little bit more staying power. He generated his ult pretty quickly and has just been hanging on to it actually uh, for the next push or, you know, a more opportune time. But he's been uh, looking for those hooks on Valutaja similar to the way that uh, the previous Roadhog was doing it in the last series against Extra United. That was Snizzle Nose. But uh, Sharik getting extremely low already. The anti heal hits him inside the Zenult, so he still does go down. That's the Electric Cowboy there, Bromos, trying to get some shots off with his dead eye, but still doesn't find any kills. Like Taja ends up getting the kills instead. Pulse Bomb onto Watt 7's shield makes it super weak, but he is still standing. Now that he's gone, it should be Extra United capturing point A finally. A little bit slower than Dignitas was able to do it, so this is still anyone's map. Yeah, definitely for sure. They still do hold on to a few ultimates for this next level push, and they have been able to get high ground control, at least from Cruz's point of view. So they're going to have to worry about this. Bromas on that McCree, being able to use that flashbang to a lot of benefit, has been able to do a lot of zoning for this big uh, big tracer kind of threat. So now Linkser is going to be the man to watch. If he can land the hooks that he needs to, this could be a very beneficial situation. Pulling Cruz or, you know, Voltaggio or Unfixed out of the air could be important. And Linkser trying to figure out they're going for a big flank. He has the whole hog. 
up if he needs it, but he does. It doesn't look like he immediately will have the ability. Does pull and kill Cruz. Cruz is almost dead, and now this fight is going to go from bad to worse. And the side of Reunited does not want to be staggered. They are backing off right now. They are running. They are trying to get as far away as possible. Toxican does take down Voltaja. And now Morte and Shark Shur are trying to get out of the way. And Linkser gets pulls Morte through the wall almost. I thought that was fixed in the last match, but I guess there was a little bit of line of self for him. Yeah, Linkser made a deal with the Devil, so his Roadhog always has 1.0 hooks uh, and 2.0. So if he instant kills and goes through walls, I think uh, that's that's the deal he made. So uh, he is forced to play Roadhog from time to time as a part of that bargain. And on the card itself, we now have basically the entire X-Ray United squad just pushing along. It took a little while for Dignitas to try and reset up on the high ground. You got Cruz up there already, bringing out the Dragon Blade. Earthshatter comes out, but actually misses at both Winston and Cruz. Nano boost on to the low ground here. It is Toxican launching attack visor of his own, running straight into that back line, but he doesn't appear to be getting any kills. He actually dropped very low on health uh, before getting picked right back up there, but they did get the kills on X-Ray Knight in the end. Unfix going down there, Vitaja just before that. So uh, really good stuff from Dignitas making this this B stretch with a little bit more dominant than it did on the other side. As this next fight starts, it's a Primal Rage versus a Sound Barrier. Sharik not even making use of that extra HP at the moment, just allowing his team a chance to get back in here. Balitasha dies instantly to Linkser again. Dignitas hanging out and they're doing a great job on defense. Yeah, and this is where the aggression is going to start getting punished. Remember, they are running a tankier composition on the side of Dignitas that we have been seeing or that we have been used to. So they have to drill through a lot more damage, and they still are running two DPS, especially two hit scan dealers who will be giving that consistent DPS. They don't have the immediate like team wide presence that, like, you know, like for example, like a nano blade would give you. However, they do have enough offensive damage as well as the one shot potential from Lynx Linkser himself, who has just been stellar on the Roadhog, and he's gonna be coming up onto the high ground, looking to pull people out of the sky. That dead eye gets used, and he gets pushed off of it, but Sharik gets knocked off of the back, and then a double flash bang for both people. Keep, makes it so easy to take him out, and Unfix just runs straight into the Linkster's, you know, Linkster's uh, cannon, just saying, hey, just reset me now. I wanna go back, regroup with my team. One minute left on the clock. They actually don't have a lot of time to push this next point, but the side, the fact is they do have quite a few ultimates they can use. They do have a tactical visor, which potentially could take out some of the squishier targets. Rubicon is going to be on the Zenyatta. He's transcendent, he needs to be used, and Sharif gets pulled again. You can't let that keep happening. Hopefully he doesn't die in this, as the stagger would be honestly mind-blowing for that. Linkser, of course, he does get intact with the Discord Orb and burns whole hog instead, and now Cruz is going to be the man to watch as he has that dragon, but he needs to make sure he does it. Nice. Bolotaja gets pulled by Linkser. Linkser is just not missing a single of this high priority hooks. And now the side of Reunited is trying to back off. They're trying to wait for Voltaja to get back on with the team in order to just regroup. But Linkser is not giving the opportunity to back off. They're so split right now. Sharik is so behind, far behind enemy lines. He needs to execute almost immediately. He might not even be with his team. He will be grouping up. Voltaja will be the person to go first. And now Cruz. Cruz needs to figure out how to do this. That tactical visor side digging toss is being used right now. Talking is trying to jump people as down, but Transcendence is keeping everyone alive. Earthshatter catches out so many people in the end of this fight and looks at everyone for side of Reunited is just dropping. Unfixed trying his best to carry the rest of his team, but he can, can't do this by himself. And now with everyone else dead on his team, that overtime timer will tick down. Digging toss, bring this to a map three. Man, we're going to our third game three in a row uh, with the quarterfinals and semifinals of this tournament. Every team is just so darn close with each other, and Lijong Tower is going to be the third and final map here for Reunited X Reunited versus Dignitas. So uh, definitely going to be declaring a winner there. No tie possible. And man, that is actually a much better performance from Dignitas on defense uh, rather than what we saw on Gibraltar. And the Roadhog alone, really just the staying power that it provided against Valutaja, getting the instant kills there over and over again, provided huge value for Dignitas. Definitely changed the course of the game. And that was an enormous res. It ended up saving them maybe like 45 seconds, but cost three ults in the end. It did get them through the B stretch uh, with some time to spare to get through the garage. So, it, you know, totally did shift the game at that point. Uh, but I think it was really just uh, Dignitas holding up much, much better on defense that worked out for them there. Lijong Tower could be a completely different story. We could see characters that we haven't even seen yet. Um, this is where things get a little bit crazier. I think we did see X-Ray United play a little bit of control and still stick with that one Winston 
uh, four DPS solo healer one time, and another time they went three DPS with Lucio Zen. So who knows what Dignitas will be busting out. Yeah, and it's just a surprise for everyone right now what they will be bringing out here. Legion Tower is a great time for a lot of these teams to be going head-to-head -head 1v1s, right? We've seen a lot of very dynamic forces for a lot of people. Toxicant on that soldier has been super strong. Lynx are still showing that he still got it, and Bromos being very strong as well. But meanwhile, on the other side, Team 2, uh, the side of X Reunited, they need to step up for this next game. We did, we did see a very strong performance for them from Gibraltar. I definitely think they have the, the skill to do it. It's going to be interesting because this is the first matchup where we're actually i'm actually unsure if reunited actually does have the skill advantage over their opponents dignitas is just super close to them right now and it might come down to you know voltage having to pull out a lot of tracer moves he's going to stay alive and make sure that he can take down bromas and make sure that bromas doesn't get the advantage in the matchup all right voltage and veinless both saying ready to go so this now is the third and final map score is 1-1 between x reunited and dignitas if you don't know what you're watching, this is the semifinal of an EU tournament that ran most of the day yesterday, most of the day today. Um, we're in the semifinals. We already played the first one. Gamers Origin is waiting in the finals for the winner of this series. There's also a third place match as well. I'm not sure uh, what the casting schedule is like for that. I guess third place match after this and then grand final. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Third place match after this. All right, and that will be um, X Rocks versus whoever loses this match. So uh, still, even if they get defeated, Dignitas or X Reunited will have something to play for, a little bit of cash for that third place spot as well. And the Grand Finals, Gamers Origin, I think, uh, surprised most people by making it all the way to the Grand Final. The top side of these uh, playoff brackets were a little bit stacked, so whoever gets out of this match uh, Dignitas and Extra United definitely earned their way through. So, um, yeah, really good set of games again today. The parity in this uh, Strivewire tournament has been great. Uh, we're sitting at around 4,000 viewers right now, so thanks to each and every one of you for spending your Sunday with us. And as the doors unlock, it looks like uh, Extra, Extra United sticking with exactly what we called out there. Rubicon will be on the Anna rather than Zen. But on the other side, Lynx is going to stick onto the Roadhog, and Bromos will stay on the Pre, which are both kind of interesting choices. Yeah, and right now, this is just jockeying in fourth position. Rubicon gets pulled by Linkser, and Linkser, this is such a dynamic Rodog. Rodog is expected to change the entire tempo of this game. The fact he's able to pull out so many squishy targets makes it so hard for any of the flankers to get in good positions. Volataja has been essentially taken out of this fight, and Toxkin able to clean up Cruz. They need to find a way to deal out with this Linkser, and it might be in the form of, you know, of something like a Zenyatta. You can't do that. And Morte runs straight into Linkser with the straight headshot to take him out of the fight. And this is just getting so hard for Reunite to even move outside of their base. They're so squishy. There's no really way to survive on these Roadhog hooks. My yeah, there's really not. <laughs> I mean, they basically changed it uh, for that to be the case. Even as Zarya now, you can't always escape that Roadhog hook if they land the right headshot. So 27% and climbing now for Dignitas off to a hot start. Extra United jumping in and engaging this next battle. Rubicon is the first to go down though. Long range kill there from Toxican. Lynx also gets a hook kill onto Sherrick. And that is basically it. the story of this fight. Tacvisor is going to get activated from Unfixed. After Valutaja kind of evens the score a little bit, Tacvisor is kind of an iffy to Decision, but it looks like uh, just a bunch of DPS versus a single Lucio on the point right now. Evoki eventually goes down, but not after securing uh, a bit more percentage for his team. 52% now for Dignitas as X United get on the board. Yeah, and a big thing to point out, Rubicon has now moved on to that that you know that Zenyatta. He's gonna look to shred down Linkser. Linkser, if he misses the hook, can get punished a lot. But it's honestly, he hasn't been missing as many priority hooks as he like as we expected. He's been making so many high like high impact plays. He needs to be taken out of the equation. So good job on Rubicon making that adjustment. He has put the Discord orb on Linkser, and right now it's all about making sure everyone stays alive. We're gonna jump on board with Volataja, who has been just a threat this entire day with that pulse bomb. Lands it in the middle, does not stick it onto anyone. Unfortunately, we'll now have to deal with. This reverse sound barrier 
Both sound barriers have been used. Linkser has been going relatively low. He will need to pop that heal if anything, but does get the pull onto Cruz, stopping Cruz's dragon, but from really do anything. And that whole hog has been used, but Linkser not porting in the right direction. Voltage able to trade him out almost immediately, and Vainless running both sides of the Dino. I see him trying to run away from Voltage as he's just putting in so much damage into it. Toxicin does get that good kill. However, in the meantime, the side of Reunited has been able to flip the point, and now they're going to see if they can play this rather securely, right? They want to be able to control this and make sure that there's no way for the other team to really take it away. Morte going super low in the midst of it. Watt 7 allowing the advantage to slowly move across and unfixed. Jumping down for the top ledge, trying to do his best again. Gets flashbang, but he's able to survive due to the transcendence, so he's able to actually get a few kills in there. Voltage able to clean up a few of this, and that pulse bomb killing bot of Vainless. This is just so big on the side of X Reunited. They're able to use the advantage to clean it up. This change is actually, I think, may have helped them out a lot. Yeah, everything uh, panning out well for X Reunited. I think uh, one interesting thing that I've noticed just in this couple of last fights is that Sharik and Morte have no problems at all just uh, going with their damage dealers, right? They all have the ability to go wherever they need to. Earthshatter comes out now, catches four members of X Reunited. Easy jump and fire strike kills there for uh, Dignitas to clean up. And they are going to flip it in overtime. So if they can just manage to hang on to the point, for one or two uh, extended fights, they should be able to secure this point. X Reunited, of course, will have something to say about that. They've got a long stagger to deal with at the moment, and basically no ultimates to work with. Uh, Cruz will have his Dragon Blade to work with this time around, and on the side of Dignitas, basically nothing. Bromos will have a High Noon uh, Deadeye available, but it is one of the worst ultimates right now as far as um, just becoming immobile and easily being interrupted here. Uh, we do have uh, Lynx kind of sharking around, making sure the Vitality it doesn't get behind the healers. Actually, did a good job preventing that. But the bomb lead things off. We went to a sound barrier here for X Reunited. They want to win this with this fight. They don't think they can afford the time to wait around. There's a sound barrier coming out now for Dignitas. They have to get those rags going. They are losing members. Lynx and Watt 7 both died. So without the tank, Toxicant going to get focused down. Then a Boki. And X Reunited should actually flip it and cap. Yeah, that's honestly a really big news on their side there. We saw in the background as he followed Cruz. Cruz was able to occupy attention of about like three or four with different players, a few DPS, a few healers. So because of that, they actually weren't able to immediately convert the effort from there, allowing Voltage to allow the backline threats to take a lot of this advantage. It was very close though. I think that Dignitas potentially actually could be, that fight could have swung either way depending on if one person died early. If Voltage was taken out a lot earlier in that, in that team fight, I think it definitely could have changed either way. No big changes in composition. They're going to be running the same exact thing into this next stage. Here we are on Night Market. Looks like the compositions are basically going to stay the same. Um, a little surprised. I guess they did push it to 99.99. So I guess neither side is really too disappointed with how they performed in that first round. But everything is on the line here. Basically, it's the third and final game of the semifinal. Only one team gets to advance. Li Zhang is basically where one of these time, uh, teams will call an end to their tournament. So Sharik uh, leaping forward here right into the face of Roadhog. Always a scary proposition. He falls extremely low, but they cannot cap and get the kill. Hook comes out, but does not reel anyone back in. They're going to take the ledge side. Now, Morte looking for the boops. Doesn't quite get Toxic in off the ledge, so we are going to have Dignitas in a pretty firm position on the point. Yeah, Voltage is in the background right now, disrupting a lot of the background presence, forcing Toxicin to really deal with him and turn around. It looks like Toxicin and the side of Dignitas have been able to take that first point. Good job, Bromos. Able to actually help out, killing unfixed. Great fire strike taking him out at last. Dignitas able to stabilize on the point, capture, and now as the percentage ticks up, they're going to press their advantage. They're going to make sure that they're fighting not on the point and trying to fight at the chokehold that the offense has to go through. As they regroup here, you got Unfixed taking the high ground with Valutaja, so they're just uh, trying to draw the attention away. They actually have Genji just below them, and Valutaja ends up getting a Pulse Bomb kill to start that off. That's really not what I expected to happen. Sound Barrier gets used in response. Again, kind of a weird one, but Lynx does survive long enough to get a hook kill onto Mort. Unfixed now launching the attack visor. This is where the Sound Barrier really would have come in handy, but Unfixed uh, just lights everyone up instead, and now Dignitas is on the back foot. Even though they have gotten up to 43%, this will be where X Reunited flips it over. 
Yeah, Linkser just not able to hit that hook means that the side of X United has a lot of good ultimates to use. So far, Cruz does not have to need to use his Dragon Blade in order to convert those kills. So he's been able to just dash through. And now he's going to play in a small flank position. He wants to wait for the side of Dignitas to wander outside his spawn. Not really looking. He has been spotted. So it looks like he will be jumping down fast. Flank opportunity will no longer be there. There's quite a lot of ultimates. And once again, Watt 7 does have an Earth Shadow, which could be big. But Volataja takes down Toxin, meaning that you don't have one of their long range DPS dealers. And as you can see, Dignitas does not want to fight this battle. They do not want to have to deal with all these, you know, all these long-range, you know, damage threats uh, without the fact that they have that they have their soldiers. So right now, Cruz still sitting on that dragon blade will be looking to go into the background and potentially catch some sports off guard. As Dignitas stomps onto the point, they use the whole hug ultimate from Linkser to immediately get the kill on Sharik. That's going to help them a ton. And Lucio, uh, sorry, Zenyatta, during his transcendence there, is just getting pushed around. He can't actually help any of his teammates from the rear. Gets taken out. Valutaja as well going down there. Cruz as he eats it. There goes the point back in Dignitas' favor. 54% and rising against 50% from Extra United. So this still could go in any direction. There's a couple of ultimates available for Extra United. Cruz has been getting pretty good value out of all of his Dragon Blades so far today. This will be another opportunity for him to help out his team if he can get over to the back line. Valutaja actually going to go over there with him to try and mark any uh, good targets. But they're playing very, very recessed into the point. They don't want Valutaja or Cruz to show up unannounced. Yeah, and right now, the fact that Dignitas has been able to outweigh this aggression from Extra United means they have so many defensive tools. Double Sound Barrier will be going down, and now Toxican has a tactical visor. He's been waited, able to wait it out, and that mid tactical visor nano boost allows him to enable more damage on that. There is just not a lot of ability for Reunite to really do anything at all. Primal Rage is just going to feed you more ultimates right now as Toxican able to stay alive. Voltage, meanwhile, still able to drain it down. And in this course of this entire thing, Voltage has actually been able to change the course of this entire fight. I don't know how this keeps happening i don't know how we turn away think that the fight has been lost by the side of reunited only voltage and cruise to once again turn the point in their favor it's all those defensive cooldowns man deflect is on a pretty short cooldown value of course is the master of being an immortal tracer uh, we know this by now so it's just a oh you know ability management that's actually the reason the genji and tracer have such high skill ceilings too but as we move on to the point here did someone just get knocked off no i think what seven uh jukes me out there shark actually is the first one to go down after eating an antibiotic grenade there's attack by the one fix but he gets whacked on the back of the head what seven there for the pickup and toxic gets the kill on rubicon so dignitas should be able to flip this back with the losses that uh, extra united has suffered wolf bomb rare whiff there from Valutaja, but he goes down instead. Cruz actually has the sword out now, and he's going to be the hero of the day, returning just in time with Sharik uh, to reclaim the point. Essentially, it didn't even flip back over, so uh, Reunited got all the percentage during that fight when it looked like Dignitas should have been the winners. Uh, just the staying power of those defensive cooldowns. Cruz alone staying alive until he had a Dragon Blade actually came out huge for them as they take the second point in a row. Reunited uh, making Dignitas, you know, look a little silly just getting them, allowing them to get to 99% and then running circles around them to take it back. Yeah, and this is honestly going to be something that's going to be relatively difficult to really come back from, right? They are down 2-0 in this thing. And this this is what gets so tough is when you have those clutch players like Volataja and Cruz always pulling out these fights, right? Even if you can get two kills on the back line, right? All of a sudden, when these two DPS flankers are able to take those fights, to take those uneven fights, those 2v4s, and turn them into more manageable situations, it must be frustrating mentally to deal with that over and over again. But Toxkin has been ready to make the change. We saw Bromas on the McCree. Bromas is now on his signature soldier, which we know him to be a very strong threat on. They're going to put Toxkin on the Pharah, and now we're going to see how they're able to deal with Unfix. However, will be on the soldier, so they do have the potential to deal with it. But Toxkin in the air should be able to deal a lot of damage. Uh, before he can be responded by it. All right, Farah in the skies now once again. Toxican launching those rockets down and actually does get a boot kill. Rubicon gets knocked off the bridge uh, and he gets a follow-up kill on the Sharik. So the first switch here for Toxican is a good one. Farah working out quite well here on the garden level. Lynx are also securing a kill. This is the first time we've seen Lynx on the Tracer. Earlier it was Bromos. Uh, so Lynx getting the kill on Balutaj is a very positive sign for Dignitas here to get us started on the last point. What could yeah. be the last one? 
Yeah, for sure. And that Ferris is gonna be so much harder to deal with. Unfix is gonna be at the, is gonna have to be the man who's gonna be pointed towards the sky, and he's gonna rely on the rest of his team to make sure that the, everyone on the ground is being taken care of. He shouldn't actually have to worry too much. though. Voltage is gonna be in the back line but right now. They're just finding it hard to get out of spawn, but the side of X Reunited being able to jump in almost immediately. Unfix coming in, trying to drill down Watt. Watch shield can only last so long, and he does get knocked up. So basically, his shield it does get turned and allows Unfix to basically do it. And now Unfix is trained on Toxicant. That sound bear allows Toxicant to survive a little more, making Unfix job just that much more difficult. He somehow does manage to land a like, Helix rocket on Lynx. I'm not sure how he did that, but Unfix now with the tactical advisor drilling everyone down. Toxicant, you can fly all you want, but doesn't matter if I can aimbot you anyway. Unfix being able to wrap that up, allowing Reunited to get that flip. Sure, they burned you know, that a few ultimates. Actually, they didn't burn as many ultimates as they probably could have, but the good news is Cruz and Voltage are both other ultimates. It's all going to be on the side of Bromas to be able to look if he can combine with Lynxer to retake this point. Yeah, Unfixed really soldiered the heck out of him last fight. He's going to be responsible for keeping Toxican under wraps as well. Toxican airborne now. Ult's starting to fly. Pulse Bomb goes out, but it's the attack visor from Bromas that secures the first kill. Cruz with his Dragon Blade gets the kill on Evokia, and it's uh, looking like Extra United should lose the point by the end of all being said and done here, Unfix still trying to duel with Toxic and did not get the kill on Fair very early in that fight. So, uh, Valutaja trying to keep Extra United in this actually secures two kills, maybe a third kill, fourth kill, uh, combining with his teammates there. And Extra United hang on to the point again through their immortal DPS players. Yeah, this has got to be tough, man. We talk a lot about, you know, being able to win these one v ones but the clutch factor is also big. Voltage is staying alive and knowing exactly how much damage he has to take. He is not going to get greedy. That's the one thing, big thing about his tracer that makes him so much better. He doesn't get greedy. He knows that if he stays alive, it's more important at the end of the day than anything else. 77% actually zips right to a health pack. That's actually what's very important. Yes, the transcendence will be activated to prevent a lot of damage, but Voltage is still in the background, trying to do as much as he can, waiting for everything to go down, using the primal rage as a big distraction. He's managed to stay alive. Bayless could be going down right now. And this is huge. That Helix Rock takes out another Tracer. They have no way to deal with this fast-moving composition. Bromas is trying to do as much as he can. But he's just getting zipped right by. Voltasha still alive. Grabs the health pack. Will be back and ready for this next push. Yeah, finally, Extra United looks like they're about to close the door. They've got multiple ults to work with. Nano Visor will definitely shut down a Farah. Uh, Lynx is actually sneaking up to the point here as Genji was on Tracer a little bit earlier, but has swapped it up. Now we've got the ults starting to fly. Tac Visor is alive here for Extra United. Unfixed just laying into the enemy. Finds the kill on Bromos very quickly. Mainless and Watt 7 both down now. And Lynx and uh, Toxican are the last hope here for Dignitas. They're facing multiple Extra United members. As Toxic goes down, things can't last much longer. They did actually secure the point during that, so there's not going to be an instant loss. Uh, there will be enough time for Bromas to set foot on the point. Can uh, Watt 7 actually extend this any further? It doesn't really look like he's going to be able to. Bayless actually came in as Sombra off of the second healer, and Evokia gets absolutely melted, and that should be X Reunited saying goodnight to Indignitas. Lynx does get onto the point just barely. Morte throw it out the GG's, and I think that is going to be the case in the end. There it goes. Finally ticking down it was another great series it did go a full three games but in the end extra united just so good at the characters they are specialized on Cruz on his genji valutaja on the tracer and of course unfix on his immaculate soldier everything goes the way of extra united in Bijan tower and now our third place match and our grand finals are both determined it's gonna be extra united versus gamers origin for the grand finals with x rocks versus dignitas and the third place match that soldier had quite a good <laughs> ragdoll there but good series all day long that was the third three game series that we've had to cast yeah i'm gonna be honest it's getting it's, it's getting a little tiring on this end <laughs> but it's super hype and i mean that's that's kind of something like an untangible we don't really talk about a lot in esports is the fact that time after time Cruz and voltage were just able to come up super clutch in specific situations like yeah sure you can look at a bunch of other people and say well they're getting all these kills right but it's all about high impact kills and you know impact on the round and it's very obvious. The fact that Reunited is so good, X Reunited has been performing right now, has been a combination of the fact that one, Voltage just seems to never die at all, able to sustain points and stall it out, but also the fact that him and Cruz have this innate ability just to get the kills where they are needed, and that's huge on their end. So we are done with this last semifinal, and like Josh said, we, we will be moving on to the third place match as well as the grand finals. And